coalition of aviation workers unions threatened to embark on strike in the next 14 days if the anti-labor clauses in the aviation bills awaiting assent are not removed. We'll discuss this ahead on the program this morning. Also on the breakfast, with industrial action by the academic staff Union of Universities for months, according to reports, universities would soon be hit by brain drain as some lecturers are already on their way out of the country. Also, we have a usual look at the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. We call it off the press. Analysis of these headlines coming up. We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. What is a beautiful, uh, beautiful morning reaching you live from our studios here on Victoria Island. Like this uh, pack package for you today, discussing the pertinent issues that you would like to hear about. And we have wonderful analysis to pack those discussions up. Once again, you're welcome. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Popo. Thanks for joining us. As always, we set off the conversation with a top trending, and it means that we're going to be looking at, you know, issues or talk about issues that are, you know, generating uh, reactions from different spaces uh, where you have the boas. Now, top on a top trending <laughs> is that the indigenous people of Biafra had declared or a sit at home. I had that chuckle, but, um, we had because today's <laughs> Wednesday, so it wasn't Tuesday. Yes, yes, yes. And so a sit at home order was actually, you know, being declared. Uh, and so that also made, you know, the reason he generated that conversation is because the president was also billed to have visited Emo State for, you know, um, inauguration or, you know, project, some of the projects. Uh, he would actually be uh, looking at some of the project and then commission this project. And so that's why that generated that reaction. Uh, the sit-at-home order is not new. It's actually has always been in the news. But at some point, because I'm wondering now, because at some point it felt like IPOP had actually said, uh, you know, it was history with the sit-at-home order. And we understand what that means. Usually Mondays are the days where you have a sit-at-home order. But, you know, it was quite different for <laughs> September. Maybe yes, September indeed. to remember. September to remember 13, to be precise. The president was built to come to Emo State. And he was supposed to commission some project in Emo State. And then there was that sit-at-home order. And it was stated that all of the states in the southeast, eastern part of the country should obey the seat at home order. But reports are saying that it was partially, you know, recognized. It was not entirely because you see how some persons who came out. And some people are saying, why did the president even come through? You know, at the end of the day, even though I look at the, the picture of the president, he was looking very young and yopi, you know, just taking a stroll. I'm like, wow, the president might just be on some kind of diet and nutrients is making him looking, uh, making him look very young and what have you. But that was the case. However, it was the projects, these projects were being commissioned and, uh, you know, it's what it is. Indeed, indeed. Um, the the, the sit at home is usually held in the southeast or called by IPOV whenever um, Mazi Namdi um, is, is goes to court. You know, and uh, it's, I think probably it's a coincidence that the president was visiting uh, the southeast at the time. Um, <laughs> I think the last time he visited Emo State, which was the last state he visited in the southeast, if my record said me right, the president um, also was faced with this, short, this lockdown. In fact, the IPOB said, you know what, we're not um, going to allow people to come out at all, um, you know, because we are not in support of you. We want to show you that we have the power in, in the southeast. And uh, there was partial compliance, but people still came out in Emo State, by the way. Um, so it, I think maybe it was a coincidence because the... the the uh, hearing had already been fixed ahead of today, um, you know, to hear the application uh, of uh, Anamdi Kanu. Uh, so, so this, this is it. This is it. And it, it, like you said, Messi, you recorded partial compliance. For instance, in Anambra State, we hear those partial compliance. Uh, uh, they also declared this at home over Buhari's visit to to uh, to Imo State. But I think if even if Buhari had not visited Imo State they would have had that seat at home because of the, uh, uh, the visit. Case. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, what we're told uh, in the papers this morning, we'll look at more of it as we go on to the end you know, of the press, is that there was partial compliance uh, of this seat at home in, in places like Anambra State, where some streets were deserted. You know, um, 
And um, some are saying, you know, inter intercity movement was virtually absent. So moving from one city to the other in the south is virtually absent. Nobody wants trouble. Like we say this part of the world, nobody wants Wahala. Nobody <laughs> wants Pai, but we won't go heaven. <laughs> if, if you know who said that, then I'll give you a bottle of uh, mineral this Two morning. Two-Face, huh? No. Two-Face body from somewhere. Oh, no. Okay, That's a okay. Hard one. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that later. But anyway, I'm not that old, by the way. Um, so, so in Puerto Rico, nobody wants to die, you know, even for, from, for those moving from southwest. Excuse my mind. Who, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> I skipped uh, my mind. All right. Now. Anyway, it was a fellow Nicola Pocuti. Oh, yeah. Your blessed memory. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, um, even for those who move from outside the southeast to the southeast, they would want to. Would you want to travel to Anambra, uh, Abba, on such a day? You wouldn't want to because you, you don't know what to expect. But if you, know, well, if so, you actually have, you know, very important transaction, I mean, a transaction that would change your life. The meeting that is going to be the end for you. Mm -hmm. What are we saying now? But, but the question is, even even the, that meeting, those who are calling the meeting, will they come out? Uh, even the banks, the banks, will they will they will they? But open? the president <laughs> came. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You know, pe nobody wants to 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 die. So, so why did the president yes. come? No, president is a president. He's a president. He can go where he, where he wants to go. Yeah, he can go where. He, but for the people who do not know who are on their own. You're on your own. President has a retinue of uh, secret service, you know, people, you know, with him. He has a retinue of uh, uh, military intelligence and soldiers. And you, you, who, do, who do you and I have? <laughs> well, I have God. And I think you have God, too. <laughs> but apart from it, that, it reminds so, me so you, well, you can't say, oh, you want to book out because the president... <laughs> You know, you is know, uh, is in is in uh, Anambra. <laughs> it, it uh, sorry. It, it reminds me, uh, you know, at the time where Momsi or Mom, you know, usually we'll say Momsi, was vying for political office and all of that. And you know how these people would say, "Who do you have?" So she actually consulted, you know, very prominent force at the time in the region, and the person said, "Who do you have?" And, and so I was laughing because she said, "You have God," and then that was the same thing she said. Oh. And so, <laughs> Oh, that's that's that's, 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 that's interesting, interesting. Um, so that, that's but that's so that's the reality of uh, uh, the, the majority of people in this country. I mean, in other parts of the world, someone just fires a gun at you. Someone tries to uh, trample on your rights. They they law protect you. But here, um, <laughs> you see what so happened in um, in the uh, Kujay prison at the time. I mean, how many hours was it before any there was, was any response? Those guys came, did what they did, and went. Nothing happened. But, but an interesting tweet coming from Renault Mokri, who has first become a popular a political commentator in the country. Um, he's called himself Buhari Tormentor. Now he's uh, mostly table shaker because he's, he's tormenting both Buhari and Peter Obi. <laughs> but he's not tormenting Atiku Abubakar. So maybe you can, of, you can no, do... No, but it's very obvious You can do one plus one. Uh -huh. uh, Renault is in the country. He's been tweeting a lot from outside. And his tweets really generate a lot of... Um, uh, engagement. Um, yesterday, he put out something. Uh, <laughs> you know, I used to say about you know himself and some others that you know people who are just you know supporting and you know moving together with, with him because on Twitter because he's attacking who they, they don't like. But now I think yeah, it's election time and everybody has seen everybody has taken their stance. Now he's become public <laughs> persona non grata on Twitter. But anyway, he said this and I quote: um, "Peter Obi and obedience." Obeyed. This is what Reno Mokri said. Peter Obi and obedience obeyed. Rather than defy IPOB's stay at home order, he said every day they throw their two million man marches for be that uh, less than 2000 attend in our faces. Today they disappeared all over the southeast. Do we want a president that obeys IPOB? So he's been trying to link IPOB to uh, Peter Obi and his movement. You know, possibly the Labour Party, and now he's using this, uh, uh, you know, partially successful sit at home uh, in the southeast to say, see, you know, you people didn't even say anything, you didn't come out to do anything, therefore, there must be a link between OB and IPOB, thereby casting uh, doubts over the credibility of the Labour Party candidate. Uh, that's where I would, uh, I would leave it. It's a controversial one, merci. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you think? Tell me what you think about this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you must do I, mean? I don't know. I don't know. So, I actually saw that tweet and I thought to myself that, you know, it's just a random mockery uh, trying to prove a point here. He's, mm. it's, it's more like you have a theory. There are several theories that have been put out there. Uh, there are speculation. And so, those who are of a school of thought, he's trying to test a particular hypothesis. And that's why it is, mm -hmm. that's why he's asking that. If you think that 
this is it. I mean, let's, let's find out where you stand. What's your stand? Go ahead and have a match on the set date, you know, where IPOP is asking that there be a sit-at-home order. Let's see if you are for or you are against it. Because, I mean, let's see what happens eventually if you decide to have, uh, you know, but, but it's really not him. I mean, if you look at it now, I'm, I'm even speaking. If you look at all of the, um, you know, the campaigns and the rally and what have you, and all the support groups across the entire country, I'm not a spokesperson of the Labour Party, but I would say that it is not entirely of, you know, Peter Obi himself who's come out to say he's the one organising some of this, and so it, it's just a, a little bit, uh, you know, awkward to begin to say, okay, let him because it is not the one. And so you have people, fans, and usually the word will be fans, especially in the entertainment industry. But, you know, supporters might just be the word, especially when it has to do with political parties and having different candidates vying for uh, various offices. So it, I just, I, I don't know, uh, because it's, it's just a difficult one. Like you rightly stated, a lot of people want to avoid you know, several issues because they understand what it is, maybe for the reason of fear. And that's why people over over time would respect the seat at home order because of what might, you know, happen afterwards. But the question that a lot of persons have asked as well is that what happens? I mean, we're looking at non-state actors at this point in time. It's a group that has been proscribed. Whether or not we agree, you know, with the um, declaration of this group as a terrorist group but they have been proscribed and declared as a terrorist group. And that's on the one hand. And so people are saying, you have non-state actors having absolute power over a state, or you know, not just a state, but states, a region. And, and it calls for a lot of worry. Some persons have said that it's entirely a failure of government. And the question would be, is it really a failure of government? What has happened? What, why would you, know, you have a, you know, this order being respected because it is what it is. Will you ask the people not to sit at home? Should they continue to sit at home? But what does this do for the economy of this states in this particular region? It's not a plus, if you ask me, because I'm sure that economic activity would have actually dwindled and uh, it doesn't e even add, you know, to right. a plus. And that's it. All right. All right. Let's uh, move on to another one. Um, of course, uh, yesterday was in the papers that um, the Nigeria Labour Congress had said they will use their structures. Um, to canvass for votes uh, for uh, the Labour Party candidate, presidential candidate. And it was in the papers. I uh, remember Chris Kennedy, one who talked about it. I guess analysts yesterday morning talked about it. And uh, another trending one is that uh, it's not quite recent, but it's still being talked about, is that um, the Labour, the Nigeria Labour Congress has endorsed uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party for the 2023 uh, general election. So we have a track, so we'll, we'll roll that and we'll come back members and also Nigerians because Nigeria is so much divided along many primordial interests and many interests that are self-centered that we need to address. No country in the world can prosper and work in unity if the country is so divided. So one of the responsibilities of Labour Party is to unite Nigerians along a common goal of development and prosperity. So once again, comrades, I know that this is just a welcome message, but is to remind us where we are coming from, is to remind us of the enormous task of what we need to do and to promote candidate of the Labour Party, but also go to the field. Particularly our youth, I'm so happy that the youth have aligned themselves with the structures and the struggle of the working class with their parents, because we are actually parents to the students and the youths, and I'm happy that they are now realizing that organizing alone without organizing cannot take us anywhere. So let us organize at all levels. Let us send the message at all levels. And I assure you that as Britain did it in 1945, we are all the structures. We are actually won by the Labour Party. And recently, because my General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation is from Australia. Recently, Australia also did the same. So I will give you the history in the business session of how that is done, what perspectives we are bringing to the table, and what structures we need to activate. Not that we don't have structures, we have structures. Human beings are the structures. It's just to activate the structures. All right, uh, so th th that's what happened at the Labour Party. They'd be having their, um, their retreat in, in Abuja. And uh, for me, there are no surprises there. I mean, NLC has been saying, they've been saying from the beginning that uh, 
they, they are throwing their weight behind the Labour Party presidential candidate. I do not remember, I need to do a check to really find the last time the Nigerian Labour Congress came out to support, um, uh, uh, went ahead to support to throw its weight behind one presidential candidate. Um, so, I mean, most of the comments on, on social media, especially Twitter, are jubilating. You know, but I think what is causing people to jubilate more um, from that Labour Party leadership retreat uh, uh, in, 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 in Abuja is what Femi Falano said yesterday. Uh, Chief Femi Falano, S.A.N., uh, told Labour Party to change their strategy. You know, he told them to change their strategy, um, saying this is what he said. Uh, you can't, Peter B can't get into power by visiting those who destroyed Nigeria. You know, and this has been what quite a number of people have been saying. Uh, stop visiting those who destroyed Nigeria, is what Baba Femi Falano uh, said. Stop visiting those who destroyed Nigeria. Change your strategy. So you see, uh, Obi is hobnobbing with Wiki. He's, he's, he's uh, you know when a woman is trying to, a guy is trying to um, woo a woman. Toast the woman. I have no idea. You understand? You take her to a uh, fast food restaurant. The next day, you take her to to buy ice cream. Next day, you take her to watch a movie. You just, you know, that is that is almost what will be. It's, 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 it's almost like without Wiki, you can't win the election. That's another person. You have um, the others, you know, Volusia Gobasa and Joe and, uh, and the rest. Um, I think in the eyes of Femi Falano, these established politicians or who are members of the uh, political elite or the establishment, we want to call it in Nigeria, um, are the ones who've got country to where it is. You know, so I, I'll just go th to the text because, I mean, I don't know if he's talking about Obasanjo. I don't know if he's talking about Wiki. But these are the established politicians that we, uh, Obi has been visiting. So Femi Falano says... Um, that uh, Obi and other leaders of the Labour Party should desist from visiting those who destroyed Nigeria if they seek uh, to rule the country, is what he's saying. Um, he also went on to say that the party wouldn't be able to seize power uh, by adopting such methods, saying uh, that will not mobilize Nigerian people. He said that power is not given. It is taken. You have to take it. You know, you this, these people won't give it to you. These guys who've been there who may stand to lose something if the establishment, the current establishment is uh, unbundled, you know, is done away with, will not give it to you, will not give it to you. Rather, you have to seize it. In his words, quote, I was very reluctant to come here today because as Fidel Castro said, once said, or once did, he went to America and they asked him to speak. He said, I don't want to annoy a powerful enemy in his own territory. Let me challenge the leaders of the Labour Party. You're not going to get power in Nigeria by adopting the methods of uh, the bourgeois. If you want to mobilize the Nigerian people, you must go beyond visiting those who destroyed Nigeria. End of quote. Uh, and I think that uh, it, it speaks for itself. Merci. For me, that was a highlight of our Labour Party uh, leadership retreat in Abuja. It was well attended and well publicized. But yes, you know, uh, NLC said endorsed and uh, said they are throwing their weight behind OB. It's nothing new. But what Femi Falano said really stood out for me. Um, well, uh, I'm sure that that also stood out for a lot of Nigerians. But the, the question that some persons have raised over time is whether or not, you know, the NLC should be partisan. And so it takes us back to history because if you look at, you know, history and the formation of the NLC, then you, you want to agree with me that at the time, you know, um, the NLC had some connection with the NCC, you know, NNCC, you know, the Nigerian Cameroon party that was involved. I probably might not say it the way it is. So before that time... You should know, you should know about this. <laughs> of course I understand. The NCNC, uh, you know, the, the yeah. time that it was, you know, formed... I hope, I hope you're not talking about no contribution, no chop. No, no, we're not talking about the contribution, no <laughs> chop. Yeah, we're talking about, you know... I'm just that's the Nigerian, like, Yes, I know, I know. Of yeah, course. Yeah. That was in 1944, you know, and of course we understood what happened in 1945. The fact that you know the strike action then and all that they were you know demanding for there was a general act strike action at the time, and so um, you know Labour Party would be described as, amongst other you know association as pressure groups. Their, their function is not to control government, but their function would be to 
um, demand uh, a lot from government, policies that would actually favor their interests. But we see that from history, they have been involved in politics. And at the time, you know, in 1964, uh, the formation, it led to the development of the, you know, the, the, the party at the time. So the Labour Congress, that's the Nigerian Labour Congress, and the formation of the Labour Party had started, you know, all from 1964 prior to 1964, 1944 as well, you know, all of this also is one. And so for those who are asking that should there be non-partisan, you begin to ask yourself for a party who forms a political party that made demands beyond improvement of salaries and what have you. And so at, at some point, they also demanded, you know, uh, made some political demands and that was what led to the formation of it. And if you if also look at not the worst spokespersons of, you know, the Nigerian Labour Congress or the Labour Party, but you would like to also agree with history, if you go back to history, that there's been a lot of connection, you know, with the Nigerian Labour Congress and governance and the political process. There's always been, you know, that influence from time immemorial because, you know, the NLC would always have, you know, pressure, they have demanded. At the time, during the Shegu Shagari administration, they had negotiated, you know, the salaries at that time. And moving forward, there's been a lot of negotiations and influence. And that's what, you know, pressure groups are for. So it, it wouldn't be really surprising to see the NLC saying we're throwing our weights behind the NLC. I beg your pardon, the Labour Party now. Because the Labour Party, Party is a creation of the NLC, and, and that's what it is. But of course, um, the statement from uh, Falanor stood out for a lot of people, and it shouldn't just stand out, you know, for those who who actually are of uh, a certain pressure group or belong, you know, to a certain political party. But for Nigerians, uh, it, it sounded really, you know, reasonable and very rational. And I'm thinking that that should be, you know, something that everyone should. You know, to, to what? It's a lot. We need to begin to ask our leaders. Accountability is it. It feels like we're in a system where people are not accountable. Everyone does as they like. And we're talking about taxpayers. The reason why we have government, the social contract, is that government will exist, you know, to provide uh, certain services and goods, you know, and then in turn, the people will pay their taxes. So it's an agreement. The agreement between the people and, you know, those who are ruling or calling the shorts is what you call the social contract. And that's why government came into existence. And so if the social contract has been breached, therefore, uh, you know, the, then it will be a lot of questioning and, you know, accountability on that particular part because it's an agreement uh, that you have between two persons, the people and those who are ruling, citizens and, and the ruled. And so to some extent, we see now that, you know, the law of social contract has not been respected. And if the people are paying their taxes, what happens to the part of government saying, we'll do X, Y, Z, uh, when you do X, Y, Z, and the people are doing X, Y, Z, and then you're not doing your part. It's quite worrisome. Agreement should be respected, and it's an issue of integrity. Well, that's it, but we'll move away from that. Another one quite interesting is that the Lagos State government is saying that uh, we're talking about the governor of Lagos State. He's given an order, Song Wulu. He's asking for the removal of abandoned vehicles under the bridges. If you live in Lagos or you just visit uh, some part, wherever it is, I'm sure you see one or two vehicles that have been abandoned. I mean, this should be... Uh, should we begin to put our hands together for it? Well, we should at the time because it feels like, you know, government had decided to wake up, you know, to her responsibility, her responsibility. And especially when you talk about Lagos as a mega city, I mean, well, there are a lot of expectations. So, yes, it's very commendable and we appreciate the government. It's better late than never. Uh, it's all right that this order is actually coming. But another issue that people would, uh, another thing that we should be looking at or another concern is the issue of implementation. It has always not been, you know, great with us. We, we seem to have lofty policies. We have great policies. But implementation is usually not our strength in different strata. And so you have, uh, you know, government saying, we will do X, Y, Z. Okay, when is it going to happen? So, but fingers are crossed. Let's see how all of that pans out. Well, what do you make of this situation? All of the vehicles that are broken down are abandoned vehicles. Uh, under the bridges should be taken off. Uh, well, I, I think um, uh, uh, that Labour Party or <laughs> discussion won't have a proper day to look at it. You know, um, I've been I've been trying to you know get <laughs> listen directly to what you've been saying, but we don't have time, so we won't get into it. But uh, I would just add to that, you know, that um, the reason why you have the laws and labour laws are quite quite clear that you cannot take the resources of the Niger Labour Congress and use it to support or any particular political party. Why? 
I think the reasons why these things are put in place is to avoid uh, any any injustice. Nigerian workers who pay dues to a particular association called the NLC or TUC, as the case may be, support a diverse number of political ideas, beliefs, and parties. You know, in the NLC you have APC supporters. In the NLC you have PDP supporters. In the NLC you have uh, 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 Labour Party supporters. In the NLC you have members of, of a court party or other parties. Now, were they asked before their resources were used to support Labour Party? Because that will be used, whether you like it or not. There's no way it won't be used. However, sometimes people say desperate times call for desperate measures. And for uh, uh, the Labour group to say we're throwing away, away behind the parties because it's an extraordinary time. So these are the arguments. You know. But to Lagos State, I don't think um, it should be news if the government of Lagos State is doing what they were elected to do in the first place. I can guarantee you, next week by this time, I could come and sit down here and tell you the bridges in Lagos, so the flyovers, or the overhead bridges where you have abandoned vehicles. There are bridge, or flyover bridges where people leave. You know, there are shanty towns on the bridges in Lagos. I think we'll also clear those ones. If you go to uh, Mercy, you know about Lindy now. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm talking like this. I want to make it real. About Lindy in Nikoi, uh, each time I pass by, you know, going to the mainland uh, uh, side of Lagos, it's, it's amusing to me. People live there. People sleep there. People eat there. They shower there. They stool there. They, they um, uh, what do you call it again? They, um, uh, <laughs> they, they do everything together there. You know, they, 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 uh, they increase the Nigerian population there. They do, they have, there's a town under the bridge. You know, they even rear cows there. You see a cattle farm under the bridge. You can go there and buy one cow. <laughs> it's an eyesore. <laughs> You have, um, you know, people who, the mechanic work is, is an eyesore. I mean, the day the Lagos State government wants to make sure the city is as clean and as green as it should be, and I know Messi, you know what I mean by clean and green, um, they will do it. I can guarantee you, and I want to put some money on the table. Should, how much should we bet? No, I want to put I, money, I, 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 don't, I want to put I money on the table bet. that... I don't bet. No, I, don't I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying we should bet, you know, literally. I want to put money on the table. I don't bet For too what? Well, what exactly is the bet now? I don't bet too. What's the bet? That next week by this time... Should I put uh, but I'm not surprised. I'm, did I'm I, did I have any argument Maybe a, anybody, to maybe a cameraman <laughs> here, will come back Coffee. here. Coffee, I'm not I, actually I in any dispute. You, uh, no, sorry. I, I would tell the director is angry with me because I'm not putting. No, he, he's, I'm not including he's him in actually this betting with you. <laughs> but I'll put some. I can put some money. I can. I didn't say, well, director, take your time. I can put some money table and tell you next week when we sit here. By this time, we'll set bridges in Lagos where we have cars on that. And and if anybody's so going to get the, into these a politicians, with you. I, I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Godo Number One, you elected to do that. This is what you should have done since. Why are you announcing today that? You know what? You are telling people that you've not been doing your job. That's what the governor is saying. He's not been doing his job. You should have done it since. You've been here. This is your second term. Is it now you're saying you want to go and clear cars from other bridges? You know. So, secondly, is something he should have been doing. I mean, Lagos is, is where you should come and see. They have nice flyovers. I like what they've done, you know, around that Ikoyi uh, uh, interchange. You know, if you're coming from uh, the, the, main, the third mainland bridge, you see they have flowers, you have grass. But the other bridges that you have, you know, people repair cars. It's a mechanics village, you know, so they need to do better. And it shouldn't be announced. We'll see it. Seeing is believing. So, Kofi, uh, um, so you, Messi, you, do you agree with me that next week by this time I will come and I'll first tell you? First of all, I mean, I first saw, of all, I, yeah, I'm not no even, cast, no I mean, when we started that. this conversation, yeah. or where I started the conversation, I said, well, should we be putting our hands together for the government for saying, hey, we want to take out all of that? But it's obvious that, you know, this is some of the issues or this is some of the actions that it should have been backed on. And usually it's, it's something that's common with us. So have you ever seen that every other time where you have a road being constructed, there's always an applaud. We're, we're saying, oh, the government has constructed a road. Really, this is basic things. It's like by the virtue I mean, you're from a family. You belong to a family. You have a father and a mother. It's just natural that food should be provided and shelter. And it's just natural. We thank the, God, we thank the we government for doing this. We begin to make a buzz out of all of these issues. Mm, you know, mm. the, there's a road. And also, we're applauding it, and then we're making a lot of buzz. And it's just in, so, in, in, so, in some in some states they, they will pay. Uh, I don't want to mention names. <laughs> in some states, the, the governor hire a band. 
Oh, you, we know the states are talking about. It's your state, Tower. It's our state government. It's our state government. We need to move away from the government. We need to move away from the government. He is going to invite the chiefs, the traditional rulers, paramount rulers, the women groups, men group, youth group, us who are coming to get money that day. How do you know they'll get money? Yes, you know, they, how are you talking like you know, and then and then he's the he'll pay for live uh, national TV coverage, uh, plus TV Africa will go because we cover events to live, you know, anywhere in the world. We'll go and cover it, plus TV will be there, all these channels will be there, uh, TV stations, sorry, will be there. And the, all he will say is take a, 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 a scissors to go now. and cut the tip and say, we, we have this we new role, you know, these are the things we need to change in this in, in the country and system. You know. Anyway, let's just move on, Mercy. We're moving on right now, but just to just add to you know what you had actually mentioned, 1979, you still had members of the NLC contesting for elections, even though it was said that they were not supposed to be non-partisan. But, but we'll leave that conversation. The, 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 the members of the NLC are not the NLC. They are individuals. They have names. Come with Adam Soshemole, as as Adam Soshemole, born 19 this to and he's still alive, went to contest an election. It's not the group that went to contest an election. It's in black and white. Go read the Labour Act. Mercy. Well, that's that's the much we can take. It says the group cannot use its resources to fund the party. And I think the reason it says is is because it's just like the laws say you can't go and have a a, a polling station right now. They say you have a polling uh, unit in a church, in a religious premises in the chief's palace because there, there are reasons why these things like are, you said we're are, going to have later. a conversation you know the reasons why this but the labor party was first in a social democratic party or something like that they had to change their name let's go well that's it we'll take a break when we return with time for us to go through the front pages of our national days we'll stay with us